I have a confession to make. As a colorist, I have a love-hate relationship with low contrast looks. Low contrast looks can be beautiful when they are well applied to the right type of material, but I have to be honest, a lot of the time when I see a lower contrast grade out in the wild on a TV commercial or a show or a film, whatever it may be, there's something about it that just feels sort of unfinished and drab and like it's not really catching my eye. And that's of course something that we want to avoid when we're color grading. So I want to talk today about how we can pull off a low contrast aesthetic, but still compel the eye, still invite the viewer in and still have it feel polished and finessed and not like a grade that got abandoned halfway through, which again is sometimes what uh, a low contrast grade out in the wild to my eye can end up feeling like. So I want to do better than that. I want to share with you guys how we can do better than that and some of the strategies that I've developed for doing so here inside of Resolve. So let's take a look. So right now I'm in a new project of Airy Log C3 material that I haven't done any grading on thus far. All I've done thus far are the things that I do at the beginning of any project. The first thing I've done is set up my overall color management. That is simply using good color science to transform what the camera saw into what our display can show on an automatic basis. If you need a refresher on color management or you're not familiar with color management, lots of good content here on the channel on that subject. In particular, you could check out my DaVinci Wide Gamut Workflow series, where I will show you the exact color management settings that I'm using here in this video and how to get everything set up in that way. Only other thing that I've done thus far is I've set up my template node graph on all of these shots. So you can see I've got these same five nodes on every shot in the timeline, and they're currently not doing anything. If I hold down option D to enable or disable them, they're simply there as placeholders, as a structure for me to fill out every time I land on a new shot. So I've sort of got a way of operating or a structure to operate within when I am going through my timeline for the first or the second or the fifth time, whatever it may be. So that's all I've done thus far. And the next thing that comes in my process when I'm grading a project is something that we are gonna do together today. That is to build an overall look for the timeline. This is something that I do for every project that I tackle, but I think it's particularly important for a low contrast look because we want to land on a good foundation for that low contrast aesthetic the moment that we hit the uh, next clip button to get to our next shot. We wanna already have that foundation in place. We don't wanna have to aim at it and get each shot there, shot after shot after shot from scratch. We wanna have that overall foundation in place. So that's what we're gonna do next. We're gonna do that over here at the timeline level of our node graph. And we're gonna start by building what we could call our creative contrast curve, which in this case is going to be a contrast reducing curve because we're going for a low contrast aesthetic. And the important thing that we wanna uh, observe when we're drawing this contrast curve is we wanna make sure that we're not moving middle gray because remember this contrast curve that we're about to draw is gonna affect every single shot in my timeline. So I wanna make sure that it is not inadvertently moving my exposures up or down. Here's how we can go about that. I'm gonna to go to my gallery here and go to my toolbox where I have a power grade saved that I've called DaVinci Wide Gamut Gray. And I'm gonna drop it onto an empty node here on the timeline. And if I look at my effects here, you can see that it's basically just a couple of customized parameters within my exposure chart DCTL. This is a free download that I will leave the link to uh, in the description for today's video if you wanna grab it. And basically all I'm doing is generating one single patch of pure middle gray in DaVinci Intermediate, which happens to be our working color space within our color management framework. Why have I done this? Because when I hit option S and I go to my custom curves where we're gonna be drawing our creative contrast curve, I have this single solitary lone tooth here that represents the middle gray of my color space. And if I take my eyedropper and tap on that gray patch in the viewer, I've now got an anchor point, a control point right at middle gray. And from here, all I have to do is sculpt my contrast curve around that anchor point. And as long as I don't move that anchor point, I can be confident that I'm not inadvertently moving middle gray and in doing so by biasing my uh, exposures up or down, okay? Now that we've done that, we can wipe out our DaVinci Wide Gamut Gray node. That was all we needed it for. And we can now begin to sculpt our creative contrast curve, which I'm gonna label curve. Let's turn these effects off. Let's turn our gallery off so we can get a better look at our images. And I'm gonna start at the bottom. I'm gonna pick up my shadows, bring them to around here. And then I'm gonna add another control point for the toe. 
and just try to slightly add some kind of compression down in there. And then a similar thing in the high end, we're going to drop our highlights way down. And then we're going to add just a little bit of a shoulder, just a little teensy tiny bit. So already if we go before and then after we're having a big effect and I'm intentionally, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm intentionally going far with this because I really want to see how far we can push this low contrast idea while still retaining a little bit of kind of like snap or separation in the images. So around here is about as far as I would ever want to go with a low contrast look just because how do we put this low contrast is not no contrast, right? So even though we want a lower contrast aesthetic, we can't have no contrast in our image because we need contrast to compel the eye, to catch the eye. If we have no contrast, then we're never gonna be able to grab the viewer's attention in the first place, which to me is not a successful image. So even though we're low contrast, we need to make sure that we have enough contrast to do the job that contrast does, at least one of the jobs that it does, which is to grab the eye and to compel the viewer to look at the image in the very first place, okay? So something like this, like I said, is about as far as I would go, but I think that's feeling really nice. And I'm just gonna kinda continue to finesse that until I feel like it's in a good spot. And this is really the most ingredient, uh, most important ingredient, I should say, in this overall look, is this creative contrast curve that is imparting this sort of milky aesthetic to all the images. And I'm just flipping through and looking at how it affects all the different images in my timeline and making sure that it's getting me closer to where I wanna see things go, right? Now, the only other two things that I wanna do here at the look level is I wanna be mindful of the fact that I've kind of like lost one of my tools for compelling the eye like I just talked about. That's typically something we could do with contrast to say, hey, look at me, I'm important to compel and guide the viewer's eye. We don't have as much ability to do that with contrast because we are going for a low contrast look. So one of the really good tools that we can use as an alternative is to use color. So I'm gonna to try to tastefully control my colors and my saturations in such a way that I'm creating a more eye-popping image, okay? We're gonna do that with two nodes from my Voyager Pro LUT pack that I released earlier this year. The first node that we are going to use is gonna come from the Tone Modifier subfolder here. This is a component that is just going to modify the tonality of my image, and we're gonna use Solaris here. And all Solaris is gonna do is cool our shadows and warm our highlights. So you can see going, let me turn these LUTs off for us. And I'm gonna go and even turn these clips off so it's even easier to see. I'm gonna go off and then on, off and then on. It's just adding a little bit of color harmony, a little bit of extra life to the color in this image so that even though we can't rely on contrast as much, we're still drawing the viewer's gaze in, okay? And then uh, we're gonna do one other piece here as well. Let's label this one Tone M for Tone Modifier. And I'm gonna go upstream again here, and we're gonna add another ingredient from this pack, and we're gonna go with the palette modifier called Hyperion, which is going to subtly increase our saturations. We can call this one palette M. It's gonna increase those saturations in a filmic way as opposed to a simple twist of our saturation knob. So it's gonna increase lower saturations without allowing high saturations to fly out of control, okay? And what I wanna do here actually on this palette node is I'm gonna go over here to my key uh, output gain button here underneath the key palette, and I'm gonna scale that back just a little bit to about 80%, just cause I feel like that's sufficient. And if we now look at the total sort of net effect of this stack, it's subtle, but we're doing quite a bit to get into this kind of low contrast realm. But at the same time, we've got an image that's drawing the eye in and it doesn't have that drab or unfinished feeling that uh, I described at the beginning of our conversation here today. It just feels a little more delicate, a little more airy, which is uh, the goal in this case, to have more of that kind of quality to our images. So we've got an overall look in place, which means that every time we land on a new shot, we'll already have a bit of a vibe going before we even begin to degrade. And now we can actually go over to the clip level and start to do some individual grading. So once we're back here at the clip level and we're underneath this look, we can operate using similar principles to the ones that I always talk about for shot level grading and for sort of moving through my template node graph. We're gonna adjust our overall exposure here. We're gonna adjust our contrast ratio here, and we're gonna adjust our color balance here. And these three nodes are really gonna be your workhorse like they would be in any grade. 
and we're going to make a couple of tweaks to the way I might normally use these nodes. The first is here in our exposure. Instead of using offset, which would be my normal go-to, you can see in a case of a shot like this where I want to drop my exposure down, I'm getting too dense in the shadows as I do that. So what I want to do instead is reset that, and I'm going to use my gamma wheel. Okay, so I was using offset here, and instead we're going to use our gamma. And I'm just going to drop that down. And what that's going to do is give me a bit lower density in my midtones, but it's not going to move my deep shadows and my highlights as much. So it's a really good way of kind of nuancing things when we're in this low con realm. And in fact, I might even uh, tempt the definition of exposure and adjust my lift a little bit as well simultaneously so that we've got a feeling of lower exposure, but we're still feeling nice and airy down there in the bottom. Really want to maintain that feeling uh, as we make our shot level adjustments. So something like that. So our exposure is going to be more of a nuanced thing that you could use gamma as your kind of workhorse for, and then maybe uh, a touch of uh, negative lift as well, or rather positive lift in order to keep those shadows well above uh, the floor of your working space, okay? Ratio, that's generally something in a low contrast look that I'm not going to touch very much unless I feel like I need more contrast in order to match the contrast level of the shots surrounding whatever shot I'm on, or unless I feel like there is too much contrast in one particular shot and I need to scale it back in order to match those other shots. Other than that, my default assumption is going to be to leave it sort of where it's at, okay? And then finally, when I go over here to my balance, I'm going to go back to my good old-fashioned offset and pull up my scope so that I can see my vector scope and just look at kind of nudging that to taste, maybe a little bit northeast, like so. And you can see as I go off and on, that's pretty subtle, it's just a little bit less green. The sky is uh, maybe getting taking on a bit of a nicer color. And that's all I want to do on this shot, okay? Maybe not even that, that much of that balancing adjustment. Let's go over here to shot number two. Shot number two is a great example of a shot where I actually do want to increase my contrast ratio to better align with what I had going in the prior frame. If I look at this and that, I am closer with this contrast turned on than I was with it turned off. And that makes sense. In this shot, the subject's in direct sunlight. In this shot, she's in full shade. So you will need to adjust that contrast ratio a bit depending on the context that you are working within. And here's a shot where my balance feels pretty decent, but I would what I would like to audition is a bit of a loom versus sat adjustment down here in the lower branch and the secondaries branch of my node graph. I'm just going to go to loom versus sat, grab this rightmost control point, and trim down just a little teeny tiny bit. And all this is doing is desaturating the image, but in the high end, in the brighter values, as opposed to in the darker values. So darker values are virtually being not affected at all, and my uh, much brighter values are getting saturation pulled out of them. This is a great way to sort of rein in colors and keep them from getting too garish or too high energy, which I was starting to feel like was maybe the case here in this shot. Let's move on to our next. This feels great to me. Maybe we could nudge our contrast ratio just a hair more, just a little bit, and then our balance as well. I think we could move a little bit away from magenta and maybe warm up just a hair. So before and then after, very subtle adjustment. You might even have a tough time seeing it in the image, and if so, you can check out my vector scope and see how I'm moving things. But I think that's all that's needed here. Here, shot number four, here's a good opportunity to maybe increase our exposure a little bit or maybe drop it down if we want to go a little bit moodier and like we talked about kind of compensate with our lift so we're keeping things nice and low contrast like so and here's a shot where i'm going to use a power window to control the contrast within the frame without getting my shadows or my highlights any deeper let me show you what i mean so i'm just using a circular power window and setting the aspect to 100 so that it becomes a vertical grad and just down here in the bottom of the frame, I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna take my gamma and drop things down a little bit. So again, I'm not moving my floor. My shadows aren't actually getting darker. I'm just knocking down everything down in this portion of the frame. And in doing so, creating some spatial contrast and helping guide the eye toward the important feature of the frame, which is something you always wanna look for opportunities to do when you're creating a low contrast look, because that's often something you're gonna have trouble with with a low contrast look is helping the viewer know 
where they should be looking because there's going to naturally be less separation and less visual priority when there's less contrast in the image. So anytime you can kind of shape things using a power window, that's going to be a great help to guiding your viewer's gaze. And again, to making that image feel polished and finished out. Okay. Let's just keep trucking through here and look at a few more of these shots. Shot five is going to take a similar adjustment to what shot two did. So it's just that uh, contrast ratio and then that uh, loom versus sat adjustment like so. And uh, the color grading police might arrest me because I did my contrast adjustment in the exposure node. Don't tell anybody. Uh, let's go forward and look at shot number six here. This is probably going to benefit from a similar grade to what we did here on shot number three. Just moving a little bit away from magenta, a little bit warmer and adding just a splash of contrast. Maybe not even, maybe we don't even need that contrast ratio here. I feel like a big part of a low contrast look, something that again, I struggle with uh, when I'm grading is I just need time to calibrate my eyes and just get used to like, hey, it's okay that the shadows feel more airy and open than you might typically uh, want them to feel. That's okay for the sort of like, if you think about uh, a grade as like a piece of music, that's the key that we are playing in. So it's okay for those shadows to feel that way. It's just something you're going to need to kind of calibrate your palette to a little bit when you initially start to grade a low contrast job. At least that's uh, always the case for me is there's always a little bit of an adjustment period where I feel like I'm trying to get to a more, uh, you know, familiar place of, of uh, like a shadow contrast before I go, wait, that's okay. That's the vibe. That's the key that we're playing in. Let it ride. Okay. I'm going to keep on going forward. This is going to take a similar adjustment to what we did prior. And this is probably my favorite shot so far in the timeline. You know, if we go back to our look, this was the place we set this look on. I think this is a really successful low contrast look. It's still catching my eye. It's still inviting. It just has a very different aesthetic than if I were to go for a big like film print level of contrast or something like that. So I think we're on a good track with this look and uh, with my balance here, I'm just going to maybe nudge that a hair more. Now that's feeling pretty good. And so on and so forth. This shot, I'm actually going to go and drop my exposure a little bit. And that's feeling great to me. A lot of these shots, there shouldn't be much that I have to do. This shot, I would like to get a little more open on. So I'm just going to increase my gamma like so. And sometimes you'll find when you do that, you need to add a little bit of saturation back in, which you could do in your balance node or in a node down below. So just to splash more saturation. So here's your before and your after there. Maybe you don't even need to go quite that far with that gamma adjustment. This shot's going to uh, work nicely with the grades that we've done for similar frames. And our remaining shots are really uh, operating within setups that we've also already had the opportunity to look at. So I hope this gives you guys some interesting food for thought for how to successfully tackle a more low contrast aesthetic when you're grading and how to uh, take advantage of opportunities to guide the eye and to create visual interest, even when you don't have the go-to tool of color grading contrast uh, to do so with. So uh, this is a great start for this conversation. Honestly, you could talk about low contrast looks and strategies for achieving them uh, for a lot longer than we had the chance to today. And that's one of the reasons we're going to talk about it for a full hour in the next session of my YouTube live show that we do on Friday mornings, grade school. So if you want to go deeper on this subject and you want to show up with questions or discussion topics relating to a low contrast aesthetic, definitely invite you to join us for grade school. We always have a great time in grade school and we get the chance to go deeper into the subject of the week than we do uh, here in our pre-recorded video. So hope to see you there and uh, to continue discussing low contrast looks with you there. And if not, then we'll see you here on YouTube for the next video.